Welcome, Battletech enthusiasts. Now, what, if anything, can you learn after playing more than a quarter million games of Battletech? Well, your life won't be long enough for you to actually do that in person, but you can write a computer program to try it out. So this is going to be pretty super nerd, but that's what I'm all about, being a super nerd. So I decided to find out what happens if you play every mech against every other mech thousands of times and find out well, what would happen. So I started writing a program to play Battletech. And first I wrote a, an Excel spreadsheet and it did okay. The problem is I couldn't really put all the details that I wanted. Like I couldn't roll crit slots and I couldn't do piloting rolls and things like that because Excel just isn't the right tool. So okay, I'm gonna have to up the game a little bit. So it's time to switch to computer code. Specifically, this is MATLAB, which you can get a personal version for like 150 bucks for home use. Um, or you can get a professional version for like a, a thousand bucks. So you uh, can go pick yourself up a copy of MATLAB and write some code. Or you can write it in C or whatever language you know or whatever you like. So here I've gone ahead and started writing the different sections of code to actually execute on Battletech. Now, I had to make certain assumptions about playing strategies, namely that um, the mechs will always be facing each other on the front arc. They're on infinite plane, and so they basically can only approach each other or back off from each other and that's it. I had to assume a favorite range for each mech. Some are melee, they get up to point blank, and others, uh, like a longbow, will try to keep at a distance and pester away with its LRMs. And basically, if you're further than the desired range, you either run or walk, depending on how far from the desired range you are. And if you're closer, then you back off at walk speed or one square at a time if you're really close but not quite at your perfect range. And if you're at range one, then you might punch or kick depending on the condition of your armor and your actuators. So, anyway, here I go as I've gone and written this code up. And if you really want to, you can go to a, some full screen computer and play this and zoom in and you might even be able to see the code and look at it but I'm not going to go and go through it all with you. It's pretty tedious, pretty long. But in any case, as part of this calculation, I want to see all kinds of things like when do pilots get killed, when do actuators get destroyed. Are there any mechs that are more likely to get your pilot killed or less likely? Or certain mechs that just don't do very well against certain other mechs or combinations? Now, you can't, I couldn't get every mech, so I had to pick some. So like the LCT-1V and a couple of my favorites. But I basically took everything from the 3025 Reinforcements book and everything from the 4th Succession War Battle Pack. And that's pretty much the core set. Now, there were a few that were not in there that I really wanted, like the Longbow, so I put that in there. I put the, the LGB-0W and the 7Q, both are in here. Because I just had to have the Longbow. I just... Actually, no, I think I put just the 7Q, actually. I have a slot for the 0W, but I didn't implement it. So anyway, all the core 3025 mechs are in here. Now, some variants, like the LCT-1S and 
the 1E and the 1M are not in there. Um, so those are some nice favorite variants, but they're just not in there. So I only have the core generic variant, the, the main variant that shows up in the, in the 3025 Vintage Reinforcements book. And I've put them in the order that they show up in the pages. So which is basically by tonnage. Now, that's not the best way to rank mechs, but that's how I've decided to rank them in this matrix. So when you get the output, it will be in order of the mechs as they show up in the 3025 reinforcements book and not according to their battle value or their battle value two, which is the metric that I really think is better. And the idea was that I would find mechs that kind of were overperforming or underperforming their weight class. Uh, if I sort by battle value, then it shows mechs that overperform or underperform based on their battle value. I mean, we know that's true. We know that battle value is not perfect. And you can tell because I see streaks. Now, I could also say I see dead people or I see dead mech pilots, but uh, that's another story. In any case, when I plot the uh, win versus loss record in battles after repeating a battle over and over again, like a hundred times or so, I see streaks where certain mechs tend to win more or win less than they should. And I'll show you a little flash of those results too at the end of this video. But first, I'm just gonna continue to describe how I got here. Well, at least how I got to this program. Or I don't know why I made it. I just kind of went bonkers and decided to find out what happens, I guess. And COVID helped a lot too, just kind of being stuck inside. So, might as well nerd out. So here we go. Now I'm going to show you some of the results after running about 300,000 games. Now first, um, I have three different, I have several different plots that I have. And I'm going to zoom these in, zoom in so you can get a better view of them here. Um, but uh, one of them shows the win-loss record and tie record and the length of the battle in turns. So that's this here. So z one is the Locust and close to 60 is the Atlas. That's the basically the number of the mech. And you can see these streaks there where certain mechs just do better than they should and blue streaks are where a mech does worse than it should. Basically yellow is winning and blue is losing. So the Locust, obviously, if you look at the bottom corner, loses against almost everything, which is why the right side edge is all blue, except it wins a couple, a bunch of times against like wasps and stingers and things. That's why the bottom right corner has some yellow in it. And here's kind of like a map, map. And then on the far edge, the Atlas almost always wins against everything, which is why those points are really high. Um, and almost everything beats the Locust almost every time, so that's why everything starts off high on the bottom left edge. I'm talking about the top left map, map right now. The top right map is when mech number two wins, so it's like the inverse of the map of that first map, because mech one wins on that. And then the bottom left of that... Uh, now, this, this map here is when the head gets destroyed, the center torso gets destroyed when the pilot is killed that is the top left the top right and the bottom left respectively and the bottom right is the difference between when the pilot is killed and when the head is destroyed that is the pilot is killed unrelated to the head being destroyed and the idea there is to see is there a pattern is there some mech that tends to kill off its pilot more frequently than others for some reason or another Maybe just because of the way it tends to play at range, depending on what it is, or whatnot. 
And the fact that you see structure, that is, these are not random speckle patterns, these are these have stripes, means some mechs actually do do have jinxes. That is, it, they tend to kill off pilots more than others. Now, which mechs actually do that? That is something that I will reveal in a different video. First here, I'm going to demonstrate running um, a single battle of one mech against every other mech one at a time. And I made the mistake of uh, enabling the output in real time here. And it's actually lagging out my computer. Uh, you can see here it's just massive amounts of text scrolling. I'm sure if you kind of put this on a full screen and went frame by frame, and if my cell phone camera is fast enough, it might be capturing the actual text of the various battles. And this might even show, I think there's like more than 3,000 battles here. Just, or whatever it is, uh, it's probably even more than that. But um, it's just whizzing by. It's probably overcoming the uh, text buffer of MATLAB here. It's overwhelming it. So it's kind of lagging out. I have no idea if the individual frames of the camera will actually be able to handle the scroll rate and the screen refresh rate. But I was hoping to kind of display a typical battle. And unfortunately, I made the mistake of forgetting to only show like one or two battles and instead I'm showing you the full one full grid array that by the way was not gunfire in the background although perhaps if the world falls apart in an apocalyptic fashion that might happen but no that was just Chinese New Year some fireworks neighbors have some some Chinese neighbors who are always popping off fireworks either on the 4th of July or Chinese New Year and since this is today or tonight well that's what's happening okay I decided to spare you the eternal scrolling and I kind of fast forwarded a bit now my uh, computer has been going at it for quite some time now just continuously scrolling more and more battle text because of my foolish forgetting to uh, only enable one or two battles instead of a huge number of battles. Um, you know, when I was first only had like five mechs implemented, it wasn't so bad, but now that I've got a large number of mechs, oh, look, it's done. It just finished. Yes, so it finally printed the output matrix which is basically the win-lose win -lose tie record and the listed by the name of the mech. So uh, if you, again, if you were to zoom in on a full screen, you could actually see the names of the mechs and their win-lose tie, win tie records. So uh, starting with the LCT-1V and the AS-7D as the first and last mechs. And the numbers are basically First against locust, against locust, then wasp, then stinger, etc., 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 as it goes. And the very last one is the like, locust against the uh, Atlas. That would be that first row. And now we're going to actually look. The very last battle is Atlas against Atlas, so we can see what happened in that battle. If we scroll here, basically the first, Atlas A is non-functional, Atlas B is functional, and Atlas A is pretty messed up. It's lost a lot of its torsos and center torso and head, both destroyed. A uh, bunch of its components, engine, gyro, a bunch of things destroyed, life support. Yeah, the whole, basically, it's just smashed. And the other one's messed up a little bit, but in much better condition with most of its weapons intact. So, let's kind of scroll back and just see what actually happened in the last bits of that battle, just to see the detail in the simulation. Okay, so you can see here. various texts. I'll, there's the last round there. You can see here initially both mechs are okay in that last round. One of them is more damaged than the other. 
and they are still popping off AC-20s and things against each other here. And there's even some melee that'll come up too. Here they are. There's like some critical hits going on here. They're just, I'm going through with AC-20 is hitting basically cord out that neck right there. More hits here because all the damage occurs and then it doesn't activate. The damage does not activate until the end of turn. So that's implemented in code. So even though the mech has been destroyed, it's still firing its weapons at the other mech. And finally, kind of the finishing off touches here. Some more, some, some SRM fire and each individual missile gets rolled separately. It's a different two point cluster. That's how SRMs work. LRMs are in clusters of five. And then there it goes, the uh, final damage. One of the pilots was killed, the head was destroyed. The other pilot is like lightly injured from some, probably some head hit somewhere in the middle of the battle. And there it was, that was the final Atlas on Atlas battle, which is the very last number on the very last set. Now let's see how far back the log goes because I'm pretty sure the text buffer in that lab is overwhelmed. It looks like the last, the first battle that still shows in the text log is the Atlas against the Victor. That's what it looks like. Of course, the Atlas killed the Victor. So it looks like, let's see, it looks like the, probably the majority of the battles, it's like only the very last third or so of the battles were showing up in the text log. Everything else is scrolled off because too much too much text was being generated. So let's, let's check out what the victor looks like. I'm going to just kind of look here. These are the, again, the result arrays here for the uh, cause of death of the mech and what they look like here. Again, I'll go into greater detail on these and about the secrets of what mechs are better than what other mechs in another video or many videos discussing the various calculations and results. Okay, now let's look here's the initialization function. So let's find the victor. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Look at that, there it is. There it is, geez, this is like out in the 50s. Okay, so now, here it is, and this is the in function that initializes the victor, defining its weapons and ammo locations and its heat sink locations and its internal structure and armor. The internal structure is set based on the chassis size, and the armor is customized for each mech. So anyway, that's, uh, that was that. This is a pretty long and pretty nerdy discussion, but uh, it kind of reveals the secrets of Battletech, at least one-on-one -on -one battles where everyone just faces each other and only stays at a favorite range, which I basically had to pick by hand. Also, there was no um, strategies for heat management, so everyone just fired whenever in range. Later, I'll add strategies for heat management and range and maneuvering and see if uh, that changes the results. Hit subscribe so you will get informed when I actually release the various discussions on the various mechs, such as how much damage did medium lasers do and which mech is the mech that kills off your pilots fastest, etc.